if I'm already moving, if I'm an artist yeah. out there and I'm doing my thing, I'm on your radar, why do I even need a record deal at this point? Like, I understand if you caught me before I had mm -hmm. the streets on fire, before I had streaming numbers going crazy and people right. were streaming my name. Right. You know, what can you bring to me as a record label that I can't do for myself? Right. Well, that's a, that's a really good question. And I think in this climate, there's going to be examples of both, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody says, oh, Chance the Rapper did it. You know, he's independent. He did it by himself. And that's fine. You know, Chance, I know Chance, you know, it's the homie from Chicago. But the reality is Chance in, ended up doing a situation with Apple Music. And that situation became really beneficial for him. Um, so I'm not going to say that the labels are the only way to go, the major labels, right? Because there's independents like your Alamos and your Asylums and Empires that are doing a great job, right? But I think that, you know, labels like Atlantic are still making superstars. And I feel like you're right. If you're independent and you're putting it out and you're getting fans and your music is streaming, you can, you can do that route. Typically, and traditionally, that route takes a little longer to get superstar. Mm -hmm. We can name a few examples, probably on one hand, of guys that absolutely stayed independent for the whole time and their household names, right? Um, but I think that labels, major labels specifically, are still able to get you there faster, get you there with a team. I know Atlantic, we have three to 400 employees around the world. So at any given moment, you got this team of 400 people working on your project, you know, on the marketing side, on the A&R side, um, you know, every aspect, merch, touring, um, you know, publishing, we're doing, you know, endorsement deals, you know, all of these different things that, that we're able to do at a faster rate. I'm not going to sit here and say the indie labels can't do that or that indie artists can't do that because you're right with, with social media and, and platforms these days, artists can go directly to the consumer. But I just feel like when you look at the, the stars and the, you know, the top 10 billboard artists around the world, majority of those guys have a major label or a real campaign behind it or machine. And so guys that want that machine, they figured out that the majors can help me get there faster. If you want, if it's all about your, you know, your entrepreneurship and, and, and staying indie, I, I encourage that as well. I just feel like certain artists do better at some of the majors and then other artists do better taking that independent route. Okay, fair enough. So let's explore this a little bit. Name some artists that you personally have signed. Um, so I recently signed YBN Namir. I signed Corday, YBN Corday, formerly known as YBN Corday. He's now Corday. I signed YBN Almighty J. I signed a young lady from Memphis, Tennessee, by the name of Juicy Fruit, who's making noise right now. She's really on the on the come up um, in the dance hall space. A few years ago, I signed a kid named Cranium from New York by way of Jamaica, who's who's doing really well. Um, who else have I signed recently? I signed a young lady by the name of Raven Lene from Chicago, who's who's doing really well. Um, we can stick if, if, if you want, because I, I just want to pull a point because I, I try to ask questions that my audience would want to know. So okay. you, you, you've done great. You signed the whole YBN crew, you know, Almighty J, Namir, now Corday. You know, Corday is one of the biggest guys, new guys in the game. I'm right. sure you guys are expecting huge things from him. Mm -hmm. What, again, to the earlier part of the conversation, because right. this is a real life example. When you got these guys, they were not where they are today. Correct. So what was it that you, like, is part of your job description? What did you do 
to help bring them to the masses as an A&R? Um, well, I think the first one was Namir. Um, I'll give it to Lamir, Namir that when I, when I signed him, he had, he was already on his way. He had a record called Rubbing Off the Paint that, and a video that was going viral. And, you know, he had guys like Chris Brown. Everybody was reposting it. And so when I, when I discovered it and then, you know, by the time I was able to close the deal with, with the team, he was signed to, you know, James McMillan and Art at War and that corporation. By the time we closed the deal, about a month later, the the skill set came in at how do we capitalize off his momentum, bring him into the building, and then keep that momentum going. Because oftentimes, especially artists that go viral, they get a viral moment, and after a day or two, there's a new guy that's going viral. So it's like the strategy was to get the deal done and sort of add, you know, fire to that flame that he had already created and help take that to the next level. So with Namir, like I said, we signed him, we put him in the studio right away. um, And we were able to catch the next record because rubbing off the paint was already going crazy. It was like, At yeah. one point, it was like 500000 a day on YouTube. It was going crazy. It hit a million. But then what we noticed was, you know, and then once he got into the system, we went to radio, and it was moving. But then he caught this new record um, called Bounce Out With That. And while rubbing off the paint was still doing its thing, Bounce Out sort of like took off like wildfire. And so – from a label standpoint, even, you know, myself included, we had to be like, okay, do we stay in it with rubbing off the paint or do we shift gears because bounce out is, you know, it's, it's projected to do even better than rubbing off the paint. And so we switched gears and needless to say, we, you know, that was a great, a great move because we ended up getting two double platinum singles. We put out the YBM mixtape off the momentum of that over a billion stream, you know, so sometimes it's just about catching that, that momentum, especially if the artist is able to, to do that on their own. Like I give all the credit to him and his team. We were not a part of making that first record go viral, but what we were a part of is catching that momentum, bringing that into the building and putting all of our resources in place to help him become, you know, a, a, a kid superstar. star, you know, superstar. So, um, now, in that regard, I'm not saying that an independent wouldn't have been able to do that, but having that staff and that team and those resources to, to just catch that and, and take that to the next level is, is something that we pride ourselves in. And, and you know, because, um, you know, again, these viral moments happen every day, but how do you turn a viral moment and not, not have what they call a one-hit wonder? How do you then take that and create a real – artists you know a, a career artist out of that moment and i feel like that's what we've you know we've we've done with the ybn collective what's up guys thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video truly appreciate you if you like anything you heard here today go ahead and hit that subscribe button and if you know anybody that can benefit from this message feel free to share peace and love